sketch the graph of f of x equal to x to the 4 thirds minus 8 x to the 2 thirds. So we're going to work through our laundry list of items for when we sketch. First up is the domain. So now we have fractional exponents, so we have to worry about the odd and evenness in the numerator and the denominator. Let's take the x to the 4 thirds. We should rewrite this as x to the 1 third raised to the 4th power. So I really don't have to need to worry about the x to the 1 third. Now, unlike square root, if I put a negative number to a cube root, or x to the 1 third, a negative number comes out. So that's perfectly good choice of number to use. Same thing's going to happen for x to the 2 thirds. So every real number is going to be fair game for this function. So our domain is going to be all real numbers. Next, we can look for zeros. So what do we do? I can factor an x to the 2 thirds out of this. That's going to leave me with x to the 2 thirds times x to the 2 thirds minus 8. x to the 2 thirds in front is going to give us a 0 at the point x equals 0. And then when we solve x to the 2 thirds minus 8, okay, well, what's going to happen? Push the 8 to the other side. We can cube both sides. That leaves with x squared equals 2 to the 9th. Now, that won't square root cleanly, so we're just going to wind up with a number that will approximate our 0. And note, we're also going to have positive and negative solutions. So the zeros that go with this piece of the equation are going to be x equal to plus minus 22.6. So we mark off all our zeros on the graph. And that gives us an initial set of points. Next, behavior as we go off to plus infinity in x and minus infinity in x. So note here, everything's going to be determined by our lead term. That's the x to the 4 thirds. Again, note it's x to the 1 third raised to the 4th power. Now, x to the 1 third, just remember we're taking x cubed, flipping it in the y equals x line. So what's going to happen there? Well, x to the 1 third goes off to infinity as you go to plus infinity x to the 1 third goes off to minus infinity as we go x off to minus infinity. If I raise everything to the fourth power, it's just going to turn all the minuses to pluses. So on both sides, we're going to go up to plus infinity. Okay, And then you can see that on our graph here like this. Now that I've done everything that I can do without taking a derivative, let's take the derivative and then we'll look for critical points and regions of increasing and decreasing. So we take our derivative for the first term, the 4 thirds comes down, take 1 off the exponent, I have x to the 1 third. For the second term, 2 thirds comes down, I have minus 16 thirds, take 1 off the exponent, we have x to the minus 1 third. Now if we take a look at this, if I want to work with it, I want to get rid of the negative exponent, so I'll do that by multiplying top and bottom by x to the 1 third. That'll give me an x to the 1 third in the denominator. I could pull out the 4 thirds out in front. And then what I'll be left with is x to the 2 thirds minus 4. If I'm looking for critical points. They're going to occur where the derivative is undefined or equal to 0. I'll get undefined if I divide by 0. So I'll have a critical point at 0. For the numerator, I want to solve x to the 2 thirds minus 4 is equal to 0. So we need to be careful here. What I want to do is I want to let y be equal to x to the 1 third. Then I'm solving y squared minus 4 equals 0. I can factor that as y plus 2 times y minus 2. And then when I solve that, that's just going to be x to the 1 third equal to either 2 or minus 2. You cube both sides, and your answer is going to be 8 and minus 8. If you had just gone ahead, okay, so you took your x 2 thirds minus 4 equal to 0, push the 4 to the other side, then raise both sides to the 3 halves power, that's just going to give you x equal to 8, and you're going to lose the negative solution. So we just need to be careful with that. Now let's look for regions of increasing and decreasing. So what do we do? I'll draw our box in, I'll carve it up according to where the critical points are, then we're going to check a point in each region. So the points that we'll use will be minus 10, minus 1, 
1, and 10. Let's take a look at minus 10. So I'm going to put that into my first derivative, put a minus 10 into here, what happens? In the denominator, I have minus 10 to the 1 third. Cube root of a negative number gives me back a negative number. So the denominator is going to be a negative. For the numerator, we're looking at x to the 2 thirds minus 4. If I put minus 10 into that, we're going to be looking at 100 to the 1 third, cube root of 100. It's about 4.6. So the numerator here is a positive. I have a positive over a negative, so that's going to be a negative, which means I'm decreasing in this first region. For the next region, let's try minus 1. I'll put minus 1 in here, what's going to happen? Again, cube root of a negative is a negative, so the denominator is a negative. In the numerator, I put a minus 1 in. I'm looking at a 1 minus 4, which is a minus 3, so that's also a negative. So I have a negative over a negative, which gives me a positive, and then I'm increasing in this region. Okay, the other two regions, same idea. So that gives me all of increasing and decreasing. Let's move on to the second derivative. So we're going to take the derivative, the first derivative. What do we do? First term, one third comes down. Take one off the exponent. So the exponent's going to be a minus two thirds. For our second term, minus one third comes down. Take one off of that. That gives me minus four thirds. So we'll have our second derivative right here. To use that, we want to clean it up. So we're going to look for the largest negative exponent, and then we're going to multiply by the positive version of that. Also, want to clean the 9 up. So we're going to multiply by 9x to the 4 thirds over itself. What we wind up with, we'll have a 9x to the 4 thirds in the denominator. In the numerator, we're going to have 4x to the 2 thirds plus 16. Now, we want to know where the second derivative is zero or undefined. We're going to get undefined at zero because that'll make the denominator equal to zero. In the top, the numerator, we note if I take x to the two-thirds, okay, well, x to the two-thirds is x to the one-third squared. So if I put anything in there, we're going to get either zero or positive. Multiply by four, we're going to have either zero or positive. Add 16, you're going to get either 16 or positive. So you'll note in the numerator, it's never equal to zero. So our only point where the second derivative is zero or undefined is going to be at x equals zero. Okay, and we mark that off. Now I'm going to want to check a point in each region. But we actually don't need to do that. If you take a look at what we just reasoned through, I just showed that the numerator is always greater than zero. Okay, it's never zero, it's always greater than zero. If you look at the denominator, we have an x to the 4 thirds, which is x to the 1 third raised to the 4th power. So if that's not 0, it's also always positive. So when I'm not looking at x equal to 0, the second derivative is plus over plus, meaning it's always positive. So we're always concave up. All I need to do now, connect the dots, get our graph. So first region, we have decreasing concave up. It's going to go through our zero, so it's going to look like this until we hit our critical point with the horizontal tangent line. For the next region, increasing concave up. So we're going to take that, bring it up to the origin. Next region, decreasing concave up. That comes down to our second point where there's a horizontal tangent line. And you'll note we have a corner at zero, and we would expect that because we know that's a critical point where the derivative is undefined. So there's no good tangent line at that point. Finally, we have increasing and concave up coming off our second critical point where there's a horizontal tangent line. So that's going to go up, go through our zero, and then just go off.